Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And one of the most brilliant minds in dealing with the climate issue, uh, the IPCC from the United Un Nations, they call it UN, uh, is Dr. Tim Ball, PhD. Your website, Dr. Tim, is? Uh, Dr. Tim Ball, that's D R T I M B A L L uh, dot com. Now, uh, we have a bunch of things on our agenda today to talk about. And we want to give people a level of information and knowledge they're not going to get on any other show, any other radio television show, or regular newspaper. And the issue is we call the difference between Tier 1 and Tier 2 science. Uh, the environmental movement was taken over by Tier 2 scientists that were minions for the global bankers back in the uh, 60s and 70s. And uh, their agenda was to take over the environmental movement to also tie it to the oil industry. In other words, they wanted to keep the price of oil up by saying there's limited amounts, there's peak oil, and now, of course, the latest is there's carbon credits uh, that they want to foist. And since Obama got a very narrow margin, probably uh, stolen by a number of technologies, including geoengineering the storm called Sandy, which we know was manipulated, also uh, voter fraud, which now is coming out with black box voting as they go over to those websites and check out uh, Bev Harris. They can actually find out more evidence of, of voter fraud where before they counted any votes they were actually declaring winners that were Democrats uh, and we had the late vote count which mar widened the margin of this very narrow victory by Obama uh, from just a few hundred thousand votes to I think about a million and a half so uh, a lot of very evil things and now Obama thinks I have the right to sign the Law of the Seas Treaty which is an environmental treaty that will bind America and reduce sovereignty the UN Small Arms Treaty, the UN Treaty of the Rights of the Child, and of course this green agenda is to put in carbon taxes and bump billions of dollars that we don't have that we will have to borrow or print out of thin air on a green agenda that's not rational. Now I support environmental issues like we're going to bring in uh, in the next few months uh, Zenith Solar out of uh, Israel and uh, the V3 Solar, which their company is just getting off the ground, but these are backup systems. You need to have an oil and gas industry, and even if we had tokamak fusion reactors using helium-3 mined from our operations on the moon, uh, and they were openly talking about this tier one science, which we've had over three and a half decades, four decades. Uh, we would, uh, and we had plasma distribution lines, so we didn't need to have substations or lose power, and these would be buried cables so they wouldn't be subject to weather. Uh, no, if we had this uh, technology, it would release the population. There'd be no exporting of business to third world countries. And we now, of course, have passed Saudi Arabia. So what we have is a liocracy in, in Obama. We have a Marxist liocracy that's manipulated by the bankers, and now he thinks he has a mandate to shove down our throat false tier two science to manipulate and control a population through austerity. Uh, and this is a so obscene and so in your face that we just have to tear it down. So let's do a good job today about tearing this foolishness down in a very systematic way. So anybody who thinks that they have a right to an opinion, whether they support the IPCC of the, uh, the United Nations or an alternative scientific thesis as to why we're wrong, uh, I'd like to see it because it just doesn't exist. Uh, so let's explain why this is so tight and why the alternative uh, opinions by the United Nations, the global bankers, and these Tier 2 scientists for hire prostitutes, maybe we'll call them environmental prostitutes, uh, why they are literally going to drive the economy into devastation, starve millions, and destroy the middle class in America under the guise of, quote, having everybody at the table, as Obama says. Well, Dr. Bell, of course, you know that uh, the thing that caught my attention years ago was the, uh, the, the use of uh, climate as a, as a political vehicle. And um, it, I watched it, uh, as you said, it started in the 60s with the Club of Rome, which, of course, was the, uh, the bankers and, and the uh, industrialists uh, setting up to bring about one world government. And right. um, they, wanted, they wanted to have a, a vehicle that they could uh, take control with by scaring the public and saying, look, um, what these people are doing is bring about the end of the world, and the only solution is to have one world government, and oh, by the way, we'll be running it. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So when, that's when a big surprise, Morris, isn't it? <laughs> big well, surprise. Exactly what, yeah, when <laughs> our friend Maurice Strong, um, who uh, was at the center of all of this, he was the link between um, the climate uh, vehicle and the Club of Rome. As a by the way, do you know? Uh, do you know? Do you know a little bit about the occult side of uh, of Mr. Strong and his wife and his uh, visitation by a what's called hyperdimensional being that actually told him this agenda? 
Do you know about that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, it's yeah, so it's bizarre. bizarre. It's like, yeah. it's, something, it's so bizarre. It's something that goes beyond even sci-fi thriller, you know, like the trilogy of the rings. This is weird crap. This is really weird. Well, there's, there's, of course, that's, there's a couple of things with it, with that point, uh, Dr. Bill, and that is that uh, people can't believe that these people can hold these views and then implement their, what they're doing. And, and, um, and of course, they are truly evil geniuses. And, well, and I think they're avatar. I, I think I, I tried to explain the technology of the nature of what reality is. And reality is a lot different than what people perceive it is. They've been told lies right from the, the beginning. Just see, look at everything. I mean, I call it the liocracy. And the same as the universities. By the way, most of the universities are completely just places where they call out a few tier one scientists. Most of it is tier two dogma that's not real yeah. science. Uh, because right. they, they, they throw in anomalies. They, if they have somebody who's truly a, quote, genius, and a genius, by the way, can't be quantitated by a, quote, IQ test. The only way you can stamp somebody as a genius is after they're probably dead and buried, and their ideas are now accepted maybe 50, 100, 200 years later as being so far ahead of their time. But a true genius usually causes trouble because they raise and they take into account all the anomalies present, they raise issues and questions, and they may never be, receive any glory until they're either very crotchety and old or they're long dead gone. Yeah, well, of course, by defining IQ in the way that they have within the Tier 2 sciences, uh, they, they effectively control uh, how people think, what they consider to be a genius, as you said. And, of well. course, you see it in the school system uh, where uh, the, the students that are obedient uh, do what they're told, regurgitate, they're the ones that get the A's, and I've watched it, young students coming into the university, even on scholarships, and then suddenly somebody says, well, what do you think? And, and they can't think for themselves. <laughs> the, the, the people that have dared to question, and, and un unfortunately it was usually the young guys, uh, the, the women were uh, cowed by the system into that being good students, and they, the people that, that challenged and, and by the way, another way they did it, Dr. Bill, was they, they deliberately confused knowledge and intelligence. As you know, as you, know uh, you can have a five-year-old that uh, is very intelligent, but they're deemed as not intelligent because they don't know as much as the Tier 2 system people want them to believe. Well, the average so, four-year-old that's gifted, the average four-year-old or five-year-old yep. that's gifted asks yep. better questions than a Ph.D. challenging a thesis. And people say that's not possible. Well, why do you think a four-year-old or five-year-old that's gifted earns it 1,500 to 2,000 times faster languages or anything than a Ph.D. candidate. The reason is their actual intelligence is higher. They may not have the knowledge base, but they have an ability to look at the world and, and see all the anomalies. I see them my daughter with Down syndrome. Kids with Down syndrome, even though they don't have the functional IQ like we measure, they see things as a gestalt, and they can pick out uh, things that we, quote, normal people can't. We even call it a savant gift that a lot of them have. But, in fact, that's one of the problems is people that are true geniuses pick out patterns that no one else sees. They pursue the, the truth almost like a bloodhound, and they absolutely cannot tolerate the lack of order in things or throwing anomalies away. That's a care personality characteristics. Maybe it's partly genetic. But you don't see these things being fostered by an educational system the same way we also have what I call false religion. Virtually every religion has been polluted by dogmatists and people want to turn religion into a control matrix for controlling the population rather than really getting them to know what kind of being they are and the nature of their creator. They don't want them to know that. So they can manipulate and control them that they're in a highly advanced biological accident that happened in the yellow dwarf star, a third rock from that, a small dwarf star covered with water, a dwarf planet covered with water, when in actual fact we are a very advanced being that's being manipulated. Yeah. And now that I finish my rant, when we come back after the music, you'll get a chance to talk. <laughs> I get pretty excited about this. This is so obscene. And with now Obama thinks he has an agenda and, a, and, and he has the mandate, not God help us. We better help ourselves and take care of this. Welcome back, and now after my little rant, we have uh, <laughs> Dr. Tim Ball. Uh, this is important people grasp this, and I, I know people think that 
well, you know, you bring in all these experts, Dr. Bill, and you think you know everything, et cetera, et cetera. Well, guess what? In the areas of expertise and the people that I bring on, I want one thing very clear. On this program, whether it's geopolitical, when I say I supported Romney and Ryan, which are the best options we were given, if you did not support them and you supported a libertarian, a constitutional party, or Obama, you have destroyed this nation. And not just here, you destroyed Canada and the whole world. And I want people to walk away with scientific issues, health issues, or anything else, that we give you not only the best answer, but the absolute peak answer from tier one level science that will not walk me, will walk away confused and not making proper decisions. You're not going to hear this information, by the way, in your high school, your university, or your PhD program. Because if you raise these issues, you will become an outlier, you will be persecuted, and you will be defrocked. Period. That's just the way it is. Yeah. It, it, and, uh, and, of course, um, and what's interesting about it, Dr. Bill, is until you've actually done it, that is, question the prevailing wisdom, and Voltaire said that it wasn't wise to challenge the people in, in, in authority, but until you've done it, you have no idea how nasty it is, how hard they push back, how much they can isolate you. And, um, it, it, I mean, for me, it's gone in every way from... Well, I, I got... Yeah, I'm sure it has been horrible for you. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you one yeah. example of what happened with me back in 1982. I presented research on diabetes, and I don't want to get into that story, but the next year okay. I was working on toluene diisocyanates with UCLA scientist Dr. Chung and Vojadani, who now runs Immunosciences in Beverly Hills. And uh, I got a call after being two or three weeks of getting late-night calls and death threats, and even some trying to run me off the Crowchild Trail, which is one of the fastest freeways in North America, way faster than Los Angeles or George County or whatever. I mean, they really clip, even in wintertime on black ice. And I got a call from the registrar, Roy LaRiche, who's a South African uh, a brogue accent. He said, Dr. Deagle, you're back at it again. We're going to have to talk about removing your license. Why? I said, well, I'm sending off bloods to UCLA because we have these auto body workers. And I was doing this all gratis, right? Just drawing their bloods and sending it off to UCLA, trying to find out why we were having auto body workers with pancreatic cancer, organic brain damage, uh, retinal damage, right? Very bad retinal damage, central retinal foveal damage, uh, uh, adenomatous polyps of their bowel with colon cancer, spread like crazy, and peripheral polyneuropathy as well as cardiac induction problems and abnormalities on their hip bundle study of their heart if they had a car conduction study used in advanced cardiology with a catheter in their heart. And uh, I said, Roy, you know, uh, last year you persecuted me over the issue of diabetes, and I presented. I worked with the head of pathology at the University of Calgary, uh, and the University of Edmonton Hospital in Biosciences in La, in La Jolla. I said this time, I just had a call from. I just got off the phone with Jimmy from the UAW in Chicago, and I said he told me if anybody bothers me, they won't bother me anymore. I said because I've been getting death threats the last few weeks, and yesterday somebody tried to kill me on the on the Crowchild Trail, or shoved me over an overpass, ran me from behind. And I said, if you call me one more time, I'm going to call Jimmy, and you won't be bothering me or anyone else. And I meant it. Three weeks later, he quit. Now, that's only one of hundreds of times that I've had to deal with what I call real ugly crap where you're, literally your life is on the line. Yeah, and, well, of course, one of the It's not just like they disagree yeah. with you. They either will they, they try to yeah. go after your license, they try to give you death threats, they try to give you packets of money, they'll have the uh, false patients come in. I had one guy try to come in and say he was the brother of one of my other patients. I said, I have a photographic memory. I said, you're not the brother. And when I said, you're a government agent, and I started questioning him, he ran out into the, uh, the waiting room. This is my office in South Denver. And I chased him in the waiting room. I said, I want your badge number, et cetera. I want to know you. And he took off like a rocket. I mean, well, of course, one, one of the ways that they're doing it, too, Dr. Bill, is, is through the legal system. You know, I'm, I'm working on my, my uh, fourth and fifth lawsuits now. Um, the previous ones, I just simply said I can't afford it. Now I'm fighting back. And of Do course, pro se. Uh, I, I've learned if you take yeah. the jurisdictionary course, and yeah. there's basically three steps. Work out the elements of your case, yeah. right, number one. Yeah. File it not only here, but in the International Court of Justice if you have to. But file yes. it yourself if you need to hire a paralegal just to make sure it's on the proper paper, the holes are punched in the right place. Because what they do is they have all these stupid barriers that if it's not in the right color and bond of paper, it's not printed in the right place and the punch holes are not in the, part of the right part of the paper, they won't accept your lawsuit even if everything is right. If you study the case yes. law, you have the proper elements of your case, and you reference, and, you're, and by the way, every single paragraph is one sentence with one subject, one object, and one verb, and it's numbered. And you do that systematically to prove your case and all the issues of the case law, 
you'll nail their carcasses. Because, to be honest with you, the lawyers, by and large, are stupid, they're lazy, they don't check out all the case law, and they misinterpret it purposely to win their case. Yeah, but the other thing, Dr. Bill, is, is that for the average person, just getting a letter from a lawyer is, is very intimidating. They think it's the law, but it isn't. It's just a letter from a lawyer. And, and yeah, I, yeah I, the I, lawyer's I, trying to scare you, or they're trying to frighten oh, you. Like last, last year, I got, a, I, I got a call and letters yeah. from the head lawyer for San Diego Gas and Electric threatening to uh, jail me for minimum of a year and treble damages because I took off my uh, San Diego Gas and Electric smart meter, which was making me sick. And now in the process of filing the first in the world federal lawsuit against the federal government and the California Public Utilities and the San Diego Gas and Electric, which will be converted to a class action suit. So what we have to do as citizens is we've got to finally say it's not just voting for the right person, that's being the right citizen. We have to get off our ass and decide to finally do something about it or we're going to go into deep, heavy-duty tyranny. Well, and, and of course, this is why we just flip back to Morris Strong for a minute. He, he knew, he deliberately set up the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which right. has become the authority, the official authority on climate science, when in fact most people don't know that all they're studying is, the, or is human causes of climate change. They don't even look at natural causes of climate change, but he oh. set it up through the World Meteorological Organization, which, of course, is a U.N. agency. And that what that did was it then meant that all of the uh, people appointed to the IPCC were from the national weather agencies, that is, the bureaucracies in each country. Right. They, don't the wanna, they don't want to deal with space weather, solar weather, so, uh, nope. anything else, any other anomalies in the equation nope. of what weather is is a polydimensional, nonlinear system. And I know yep. I programmed in Pascal PL1 and, and machine language for, for uh, what's called multilinear programming, which is why they wanted to recruit me at UCLA in 1977. And I knew how to yep. do these things. I taught myself. The yep. problem is they don't want that. They have a model selected by a bunch of pinhead, bio, uh, pinhead mathematicians who will only insert certain parameters into the equation of their so-called complete model. And it's not complete by any means. It's just ridiculous. It generates well, as you, know, do, as you yeah. know, Dr. Bill, the, 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 the key in the models are the computer codes. And right. the computer codes are the instructions to the computer as, as to how to calculate. And the IPCC don't release their computer codes. Well, the first, there are three processes involved. Number one is you have to make a series of observations, hypotheses and yeah. theorems, and you have to convert them to equations. Then you have to have a way of measuring those parameters in the real world. And then finally, you have to insert them back into your equations to make a predictive model that's nonlinear. They've not done yeah. any of those three things, and then they want us to decide on environmental policies that will change the direction of not only the population support or carrying capacity of the world, the world economy, but who has and who has nothing. Yep. Uh, it's so obscene, I, right. and when people say they think they have a right to an alternative opinion, I just want to slap them. I just, I've had it. I, I just, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to tolerate it anymore. And if they think they have an ability to, to come into my spider cage and have a little fight over it, come on down. We're going to have a bad day. Articles on your website, drtimball.com, drtimball.com. Uh, what yeah. are the latest articles? Because we need to muster our forces. And by the way, it's not committees or groups that do it, it's individuals that pile pro se litigant action. Uh, for example, we need to have action to deal with the black box voter fraud uh, that's been going on in this country, and we need action to take away and get rid of this electoral college. We need actions to actually have what we call direct democracy, where we actually vote on every issue, not just on some issues. And we need to have real tier one science opened up so all the hidden science that's been sequestered away by big transnational corporations and, and, and uh, military industrial intelligence complex becomes open to the public because I guarantee you, if we had access to the satellite based data, we'd have a clear idea of the space dangers of space weather near Earth objects and also the dangers of not dealing with climate change that really is occurring at a very rapid phase, but it's not caused by humans. And that climate change could kill a huge chunk of humanity, uh, not only by nearest objects, but by major climate changes we're heading into an ice age, not global warming, as these morons try to say we are. Yeah. 
Well, exactly, Dr. Bill, and, and, and that's, uh, what's even worse is that uh, not only are we not, uh, we're preparing for, uh, or not preparing for the cooling that's going on, we're preparing for warming. In other words, we're doing the exact opposite of what we should be doing. And oh, what, yeah, we're getting, our, the, we're getting our, 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 our flip-flops and our bathing suit and our snorkel ready, and we're going right. to end up in Anchorage, Alaska in the middle of the winter. Exactly. And, and, and of course, the, what's so silly about it is that if you think logically, but that's what they don't want you to do, mm, is that, do if that. You prepare for, if you prepare for cooling and it warms, that adjustment is much, much easier than going the other way, which is what they're doing, that is preparing for warming and it cools. And people only have to ask themselves, okay, what's happened in the last few winters in the U.S.? When you've had right. cold winters, and what damage has that done to the economy and to, to uh, the life and heating bills and everything else? But um, the sun uh, reached a peak of, of its activity, of a thousand-year peak, as the, as the Russian scientist Yuzoskin has shown, and is now um, going in, in a different direction. It started in 2000. Right. And uh, there's no question we're heading for cooling, but they're preparing us for warming. <laughs> yeah, um, it's so crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. It is crazy. But but yeah. it, it what they've done, of course, is is as I mentioned, was through more strong. They did it through the uh, uh, IPCC and the World Meteorological Organization, and and of course now the bureaucrats are in charge. Mary McCarthy's quote, where she said, "Bureaucracy, the rule of no one, has become the modern form of despotism." And of course, that's what Morris Strong understood. And and so now, and of course, the politicians, if they're going to raise questions, and I've seen many of them, I give them the questions to ask uh, Environment Canada, say, or or NOAA. And the bureaucrats, of course, respond by saying, well, we're the experts. What do you know about it? You're just a politician. Um, and uh, we've got that going on right now. Seth Bornstein of the New York Times wrote an article the other day saying, oh, yeah, the computer models are accurate. They work. Um, and uh, how dare you question them and so on. And, uh, but it's not the case at all. Well, what we have is a modern church is not a Christian church or a Jewish rabbi or rabbinical synagogue. It's not even a satanic church where they kill cats as their sacrament. It is a church of pseudoscience run by global bankers. The global yeah. bankers are the high priests and their minions, the tier two scientists that are prostitutes. They're the, if you want to call it the prostitutes within the temple of false science. Well, look at look at the money that George Soros, who's another one, and by the way, he he's a good buddy with our friend Maurice Strong, and Strong, by the way, is, is in China, claiming that the way that the Chinese government is is the way that we should be running the world. Oh, state wonderful! Capitalism. Yeah. Well, it's, so, it's so, state so capitalism. sickening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it's so sickening the way that uh, we get communications from Chinese people all the time. They live in absolute tyranny. And these are smart people. There's more new Christians yep. in China than any other, all the other countries in the world every day. They have more new scientists. They have very bright people, and they have a boot on their neck of 80 million communists. But the rest of the population are all in human slavery. In fact, their problem is they're racing ahead too, even with genetically engineered human beings. They have laboratories yep. raising hundreds of thousands of clone Chinese coal super race, just what the Nazis conceived the Chinese are doing today. And people think, oh, no, they're not going to do that. They have no restraint. There's no discussion in open. There's no open media saying, oh, no, I don't think you should do this. Uh, the same way here in North America, we don't discuss the idea because of the global control with Monsanto, I call Mount Satan, directly allied with the Obama administration that says they have a green agenda. He doesn't give a crap, a rat's ass whether or not these GMO foods will destroy the population. Because we know even those unstable genes are jumping, in, jumping into the pigweed down in Georgia, Alabama, and so on, and completely destroying the environment. But they'll say they have a green agenda, even though they won't let license us to get oil and energy. They're going to allow genetically modified crops. They'll just rip and tear the guts out of the genetic heritage of the, pop, of the plants and species of animals in our environment. It's craziness. But, but Dr. Bell, look at look at the what's going on with um, uh, people trying to get information through the freedom of, freedom of information, and it's being rejected on the grounds of of um, well several reasons. But national why, security or some other stupid excuse. Oh, exactly. But why should information that is gained by a scientist who's being paid by the taxpayer? 
who's being funded by the taxpayer, how the, can that scientist then turn around and say, no, the, the, the taxpayer has no right to look at the data that, I'm, that I've got or that I'm using. And that's what's going on with the IPCC. The scientists that are working there are rejecting freedom of information requests for their data. And, and of course, the old biblical thing, the devil's work is done in the darkness. If this is information, and, and then, of course, there's the, the claim of, it, oh, it's, it's in, intellectual property. Yeah, but you're using that intellectual property to influence the world, influence my life, to affect my life. So surely there's got to be uh, a, a, a level at which the public have a right to know. But there's also a level of responsibility. Of these, if you found a cure yeah. for an illness, it would be evil to, to withhold that knowledge. If you knew what, why, why a plague was spreading or why people were dying, for example, in Japan, they withhold yeah. science about the danger of Fukushima. I'm presenting a lecture next April in St. Louis for the Academy of Environmental Medicine, the keynote lecture on the Fukushima causing chronic fatigue to genetic damage and literally a degradation of the population. It's my prediction that human beings in the 21st century will reach peak oxygen and we're going to start seeing it dive because of our current industrial policies. It's my uh, analysis that by 2040 to 2045, the human beings will start to find significant problems with infertility rise to the level where you won't be able to successfully reproduce a normal, healthy child unless you submit your gametes to a lab through licensed laboratories run by the state. That's what I'm yeah. saying. And I'm saying in 30 years, by 20, let's say 20, 20, 2042, by 30 years, Human beings will not be able to reproduce unless the state authorizes them through gamete intrafallopian tube transfer after you submit your gametes and have polar body exclusion of the blastocyst to reimplant in the wife, either wife or growing an artificial uterus. People say, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. You're just a knucklehead that doesn't want to believe the future is going to get here, whether you like it or not. Well, all they, all they need to do, uh, Dr. Bill, is go and read what um, Obama's science our John Holdren was writing, because he was a member of the Club of the Rome, and, right. and of course, as you know, the key, the key books there were uh, Paul Ehrlich's book on overpopulation, limiting population, and, and of course, the other one, Limits to Growth, which was a grossly simplistic use of computer models to argue that, um, you know, that, that we're destroying the planet and so on, but Holdren was um, basically he was you go and read the list of things that he was recommending of, of uh, abortions right up to the time of birth and and uh, right after age three they're now discussed at the Green Party in uh, Australia and internationally oh, yeah. the so-called the Journal of Ethics this year published yeah. that they think it's perfectly rational now that we've reached this nidus of abortion rights uh, here especially post the election that it's perfectly reasonable to abort up to three years of age if they think there's genetic problems or if the child's just unwanted. Yeah, uh, I mean, it really is getting more than yep. bizarre. It's getting damned evil, and they're really basically taking the last shred of what it is to be a human being, even decency away. Yep. Yeah, it really is disgusting. And when I, 24 years ago, wrote the book Abortion to Armageddon, the Armageddon yep. is a scientific Armageddon. It's a, a energetic Armageddon. It's a environmental, it's a genetic, a reproductive Armageddon. It's not just a big war in the Middle East. It's much more than that. And the lies from the IPC and the United Nations and the bankers are part of that process. Welcome back. And again, the website for Dr. Tim Ball is drtimball.com. Dr. Tim, you want to give uh, read off some things from uh, Mr. Holdren, who's the uh, one of the science czars, which, by the way, is unconstitutional by the liar-in-chief, the monster in the White House, the puppet I call Obama Nokio, puppeteered by Geppetto Soros and the bankster elite that are completely soulless black monsters. And uh, yep. and we're talking about their hearts. I mean, what we're dealing with is the heart of these pseudo-human beings, the control freak elite. They have very evil things planned that are well beyond 1984 or Brave New World. What's coming on us very quickly, and it doesn't have to be this way, we could have energy independence this year, let alone in 2020. We could have no shortage of food in the world, even with climate change, if we knew what climate we're going to have. We could have a, a system of, of a clean environment with, with clean technologies, with clean hydrofracking without chemicals. We could have all kinds of safe nuclear technology without the danger of reactors blowing up and spewing radiation everywhere. But none of these things are happening because the liocracy thinks the only way they can rule is through devastation and dialectics. 
Yeah, well, of course, the, the bottom line of everything they do is, is to, to control the people. They want the power of control over the people and whatever is necessary to do that. But John Holdren was... Uh, yeah, a read, read that off. That would be important. Yeah, well, that he, he co-authored a book with Paul Ehrlich, and Paul Ehrlich is the guy that started with the Club of Rome. Uh, he was the, the guy behind the overpopulation, Population Bomb, as it was called, the book. And, of course, his predictions about what was going to happen to population uh, were completely wrong. That's at the basis, by the way, of a lot of what the Club of Rome is doing. There's too many people on the planet. We need to limit them. We need to control them. And uh, not only that, but their actions are destroying the planet, and therefore we need to... That, gives us the right to control. But here's some of the things that, in a book that Holdren co-authored in 1977, he's now in charge of science policy for Obama, and yeah. here's some of the things that he wrote. Women could be forced to abort their pregnancies, whether they wanted to or not. The population at large could be sterilized by infertility drugs, intentionally put into the nation's drinking water or in, or in food. Single mothers and teen mothers should have their babies seized from them against their will and given away to other couples to raise. People who contribute to social deterioration undesirables can be required by law to exercise reproductive responsibility in other words be compelled to have abortions or be sterilized a transnational planetary regime there's that world government thing again should assume control of the global economy and also dictate the most intimate details of americans lives using an armed international police force and um, he now of course now he was challenged when he when he appeared he was one of the few czars that actually got to go before the um, Senate and Congress for his confirmation, and he was asked about some of these things. He said, no, no, he said, I've changed my mind completely. Well, oh, sure. We, we, know, we, we know that doesn't happen. But even actually, he changed his mind for the worse. But in other words, yeah, what he well, believes he, in now is even worse than that. But, he, yeah, but, but I mean, even if he believes only half of that, and by the way, the book was called um, Eco-Science, Population Resources Environment, published in 1977. And uh, so there he is in, 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 in the White House and, and will continue apparently in the White House. But as I said, it, it's all about uh, using uh, issues to scare the public. What better than the sky is falling? That's the classic phrase or terminology for, or, you know, chicken littles. The sky is falling. Well, if you tell people the climate is changing, that's equivalent to the sky is falling. So yeah, it's it been is. a very effective vehicle for them. Yeah, and, and here's, the, here's the issue. I belong to the Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. I'm preparing my lecture for yeah. on Fukushima next April, and next December I'll be uh, doing a lecture, keynote lecture on the most advanced theory in aging. We are approaching a number of what I call singularities. We've approached what I call the energy singularity, where we have tokamak fusion reactors now. These are technologies we've had for decades. We can produce literally no pollution. For example, when we discovered that sulfur dioxide and other toxic things are coming out of our coal-fired generation and so on, we developed technologies to scrub them. The only thing that comes out of these chambers now, out of these coal plants like in Colorado from high-quality coal, is water vapor. Uh, we don't even need to mine coal like we did with the old coal carts. My great-grandfather died after a coal mining accident uh, at a colliery in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and he pushed out four men because he was a giant. He was 6'9". He was a big boy. And uh, afterwards, three days later, he died of a, of a brain hemorrhage after the coal roof fell on his head. Well, the fact is, we don't need a mine like that. We can actually mine by technologies where we just run, drive a drill down, can go even slant drill into a, a seam in Wyoming, and there's enough energy in that coal mine seam using coal gasification technology that we could supply the earth with enough energy with that one seam for 100,000 years or more. And the thing is, we eventually are going to have tokamak fusion reactors, but we're always going to need hydrocarbons for plastics, chemicals, and many other things. And we have to realize that all of this tier one science is being withheld from us. We're purposely being dumbed down because they want to poison us with stack vaccines, give us toxic health care, Obamacare, take away the value of our money by printing tons of money, make a more dependent class that has a subnormal IQ with poor education, poor nutrition, and toxic genetically modified foods, so you create a sub-race of humans. And what Holdren wants to do is precisely this. He wants to back up Brave New World 1984 policies from the British, which are designed specifically to create a super-race in this century. Uh, and we have various groups. The Chinese have been given a lot of our super-race technology. The Russians were working with us since the Second World War on advanced cloning technology. Uh, this is really disgusting, but it's actually happening. And people think, this is sci-fi. No, it isn't. 
So that the collapse of the economic system is parallel with the singularity, which in the next five to ten years, people will not need to biologically age anymore. We're within five, ten, maximum twenty years if, if we don't have a great war, or destruction of our economy or ecosystem, of literally conquering aging, physical aging. We are uh, at the point where we are oil independent. I saw the report today on my news that we're independent of the need for Saudi Arabian oil. We actually export more oil than we import. We are a net producer of the largest amount of oil and gas products on the planet. We have been restrained by the last four years of idiotic management by Obama. In spite of that, in 2011, we already exceeded our actual energy needs. And then we have uh, the uh, liocracy that we're so-called have to borrow money in order to maintain a social safety net. And we have the idiot Republicans who didn't have a response to Hispanic people that want to emigrate here. They're good, hard-working people or single women that want a non-abortive uh, birth control, which is rational. Non-abortive birth control is rational. You can put a valve in and turn it off so you can't get pregnant, and you want to turn it on to have children. And it's their damn business, not the damn state. We have a government that wants top-down control. They want to control everything from your bedroom to your email to, uh, to your YouTube. In fact, the FBI are now suing every phone company in America to get access to your phone records and your GPS coordinates of your cell phone every moment you use that phone, even when it's off. The FBI are suing under the Obama administration right now. People say that's just a theory. It's not a theory. It's a damn fact. Well, of course, Dr. Bill, that's, that's uh, the, the frightening thing. Uh, I live in British Columbia, and we, we've got this. The, um, they already did it. Uh, it's already done in Canada. Canada is a laboratory, yeah. just like Australia. We, way, way, yeah, you guys got, are way, got, way ahead down the communist uh, rat, rat hole. And the we, same with Australia. We've got a carbon tax here, and we've got the smart uh, meters, you know, to, so that the government can control, can monitor. They say, oh, well, we want to be able to find out where it's being wasted. But who defines what's wasted? If I can pay for it, I should be allowed to use whatever I want. But, of course, but with the smart meters, they'll be able to come in. And, 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 uh, and, of course, the next thing you know, as it was talked about in New York State, where they wanted to control the temperature that you had your uh, thermostat set at. Exactly. So, well, even control, yeah. we had uh, Dr. Ole Johansson on from the Karolinska Institute. His research yeah. for the past 40 years, electromagnetic pollution. And he stated yeah. a case in which a woman last year had her washer dryer shut off by remote Zigbee network controls at 2.4 gigahertz, which is the harmonic cyclotron resonance of water, so she couldn't do her laundry until after 10 to 11 o'clock at night. So literally, instead of sleeping, she needs to get up and do her laundry at non-peak hours. Yeah, but uh, Dr. Bill, one of the things we haven't talked about then is central to a lot of this, and that is the data, the statistics. And of course, the governments uh, are the are the agencies that uh, produce all these statistics. And one of the things that I found out with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the the um, strong setup thing, they they are the ones that produce the numbers on the amount of. CO2 that humans produce each year. They're the source of that data. Then they turn around and blame that data for the, the uh, global warming and the climate change, the, the, the vehicles they're using to control you. And, yeah. and so it, 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 if this was going on in business, if you were producing the data and then making a profit off of that data, that would be called fraud. Well, I think and, we have and, a new class of international, uh, what I call science fraud, where the people that do this go to jail and they throw away the key. Yep. They yep. no longer have access yep. to the Internet or can publish. They no longer yep. can get to, they can, they can be on low, what we call low security prisons, but they're never going to get out to, the, to, to kind of manipulate the public again. And that would include these bankers, these false prostitutes, tier two scientists that are working for the IPCC, because this dialectic has got to stop. We need to get out of the United Nations, we need to get out of this false environmental uh, thing, because the environment itself is crashing around our ears while we're doing false policy.